Welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 92. My name's Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram or Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called the Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn, where I sell my hand-spun yarns. And we have a Ravelry group called the Corner of Knit and Tea. If you haven't come over, please do. Hi! How are you? I hope you have had a wonderful week. It is Sunday, June 12th in the early afternoon, and um, it has been a wonderful week for me. I have gotten tons and tons of knitting done since I last saw you. Um, last week I recorded on Friday before we left town for a few days, and um, we went out to western Kansas for my husband to fly his drones. Um, he likes to fly uh, radio-controlled model aircraft, and we went out and he took second in the race, which was fabulous. Um, but it was about a five or six hour drive out because we actually overshot where we were going to visit somewhere else. Um, and then a four hour drive home plus time in between. And so I got oodles knitted, so much knitting. It was absolutely fabulous. Um, and we just had a great time getting out of town for a little bit. Um, and then this week has been okay, you know, it was back to work, the normal grind, um, but I still did a lot of knitting and spinning, which I am very pleased about. So um, I have lots and lots to show you today, which is really um, what I'm talking about. So let's get started. I actually made hot tea today, which is kind of amusing. It is in the 90s out and um, very, very humid. It, summer has hit with a vengeance. Um, but that means that we keep the air conditioning going to try and keep the inside from getting too humid and sticky. Um, so inside the house, I tend to run a little cool. So I decided to go with hot tea today. I am drinking blackberry tea from Tea Geschwender. Um, this was a gift from my sister uh, probably two years ago. I know you shouldn't keep tea that long, but I do because I don't get through it fast enough. Um, this is blackberry. It says plump blackberries make for a luscious midsummer iced tea um, or a warm distraction come colder months. Ingredients are apple pieces, hibiscus blossoms, rose hips, elderberries, and blackberries. Um, and I am drinking that in my It's Tea Time mug. I got this mug from Anthropology uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, I don't know if they still have them or if you can still find them, but I do love it. So that is what I'm drinking today, blackberry uh, tea in my mm -mm 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 tea time mug. And that is delicious. That actually would make a great iced tea. I don't think I have enough to make a pitcher of it. Um, and I could have poured this over ice today, but I decided not to. But this is a favorite. It's um, I added a little bit of sugar, but it's got a nice um, berry flavor and it's a little sweet and tart and it's perfect. So let's get to the knits. The first thing that I finished, you see I am wearing. This is the Dreaming Color Shrug. It is a pattern by Kay Dahlquist on Ravelry. And um, it is a lacy shrug for summer. It took two skeins of Dream in Color Classy in the color Rio Verde. Um, and like I said, I think it's more of a turquoise color. I think it's coming across quite nicely on the screen. This was a fairly quick knit. I finished most of this last weekend. Um, and I think it will be fabulous come summer um, or now um, in the office uh, on top of dresses or tank tops or just something where I need a little extra warmth um, and it is super soft um, I knit it and blocked it and then added the final ribbing and did the seaming um, it was a well-written pattern um, I had uh, there were a few things I might have done differently with it and I put those in my project notes um, but that is the first project done and actually I said it took two skeins it actually took right around um, 400 yards maybe a little bit more so I had a little bit left over. So I decided to cast on for an infant size barley hat. This is the barley hat by Tin Can Knits. Um, and I used most of my leftovers. I might, um, this came out to be like between 68 and 70 yards. Um, I might have 
enough to do um, little hand pocket, like little, kind of like mittens, but without um, a thumb. I was thinking about doing these um, because this is for my new little nephew. And so I was thinking that I could do some little hand pockets and then it would be a perfect um, winter set for him um, because he'll only be, um, well, he's due to arrive in November. So he'll only be a month or two old when winter hits. Um, so I didn't think he needed full mittens. Little hand pockets would probably be fine. And um, by my reckoning, I have between 20 and 30 yards left. And I'm hoping that would be enough to do a few small hand pockets for him. I guess we'll find out. Um, but oth otherwise, I used up most of my skeins and that is two finished projects. My third finished project for the week is um, probably expected if you've been watching. It is my Hilda. Um, and I decided not to wear this one today because it is a little warm for that. Um, but actually, I'm going to um, go outside later and make my husband take some pictures. So Hilda is finished. This is a sweater by Bristol Ivy. Um, and it was uh, designed for... Um, I think it's the fiber company. It's a British um, yarn company, but I decided to knit it in Woolmise um, DK in the Moses colorway, and that is actually a pretty good approximation. It is a dark blue with a hint of teal. Um, again, the primary attraction to me on this sweater was the really interesting back, which is created by um, yarn overs and twisted ribbing. Um, and I have washed and blocked the sweater. It is now the length that I want it to be. Um, it feels great. It softened up quite a bit, um, and I am very excited to go take some pictures. Um, unfortunately, then I will have to put it away till next year because it is way, way, way too warm for right now. But that is Hilda done. So that was an exciting week of finishing off a lot of yardage and a lot of um, projects that I had going. So it was time to cast on some new projects. Um, I had showed you a few things last time that I wanted to do. I know I had showed you a sock pattern and I got a little stymied on that one. Um, I ultimately decided that the wedge socks, that was the pattern that I showed you, was not something I wanted to knit. Um, I had a couple concerns with it. One was how stretchy it would be because it was sections of garter and stockinette and I wasn't sure if it would have enough give in the sock. Um, the second one was exactly what size to choose for myself um, because I wasn't exactly sure how, like I said, between how much give and um, and um, what the pattern was like. I wasn't sure exactly which size to choose for myself to make them comfortable socks. And finally, I wasn't sure whether I was gonna enjoy walking on alternate sections of um, stockinette and garter because that was gonna make the area under my feet lumpy. And the way the, um, I'm not giving away too much, but the way those sections were created were with short rows. So there was no way to really um, reserve them for the top of the foot and not for the bottom. So I sat in limbo with that for a while and I ended up not actually casting those on um, and instead I moved to a different sock project. <laughs> right, so I had a couple balls of Regia four ply in my stash. Actually I have the second one still intact. Um, this I had bought um, I had bought this from a friend who was de-stashing a while ago, and so I decided to cast on one of Mina Phillips' new patterns. She's the Knitting Expat, and she just um, released a book called Beyond Vanilla um, Volume 1, and they are um, sock... In Volume 1, there are four sock patterns um, that are just a little bit... Um, they add just a little bit of interest to the sock beyond a um, plain vanilla sock, and actually she has a Volume 2 coming out with four more patterns. Um, but I purchased that and decided to knit one of those and I chose to knit the cobblestone socks um, and you can see there that you can kind of see the the stitch pattern there um and I finished my first sock so these were 60 stitches on us zeros usually I do 56 stitches if I'm on a us one and a half but because I went down to zeros I decided to add a couple extra stitches and I did a standard heel flap and gusset um I believe she actually uh provided for a German short row heel in there but I just ignored that um but I did use her pattern um finished the first sock have not cast on the second because I thought that I had enough and I'm still 
still hoping that I do. Um, this is going to be a little bit of yarn chicken, but based on what I had left, because I have small feet, I cast on um, a toddler sock in the um, same pattern and um, pretty much same method for Miss Roxy. So I, um, I made it a shorty because I knew I was probably going to run out of yarn. Um, I ended up doing a fish lips kiss heel um, because I didn't want to do a full um, garter flap and gusset heel. Um, um, partially because, again, I am not quite sure about the yardage, and second of all, because I think this will be fine for her. Um, and I am working on the foot now, and I still have probably hmm, a couple more inches before I can break down for the toe, and I have this much left. So I am hoping that my mini me will get a pair of socks out of these as well. So I have my first sock and Roxy's first sock. Um, Anyway, so I hope to finish Roxy's first sock maybe today, and then I need to get started on the second sock for me, and then the second sock for Roxy, and um, these I'm going to enter into Socket to Summer. Um, I'm just going to put the baby sock pattern with mine, um, not that they'll count um, as anything as anything, uh, as a separate entry. Um, I'm just going to put them all together and photograph them and then submit them together for Socket to Summer. So that is what I have going on, and I will pretty much use every last scrap of this yarn, which is fine with me. I was hoping to have a little bit left over for my sock yarn blanket, but if I don't, that is fine. So yes, so that is what I'm working on this week, and like I said, I will, um, I will work on the second sock and hopefully maybe finish that this week. Um, it would be great if I could tear through that. I don't know if I will or not because I have one more project on the needles, um, but that is, um, I definitely wanna finish these by the end of the month. And I have the other yarn caked up and actually I have picked another project. So that will be my next pair of socks. Okay, so that brings me to the last project. The last project I decided to cast on for this week um, was a baby sweater. This will also be for my new nephew. Um, I picked out the Garter Stitch Baby Kimono. This is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. I think it's one of her early patterns, um, but it is just a very simple garter stitch um, little fold over kimono, which I think is a great style for a newborn baby. And I am using as yarn, um, I got two skeins of this is Hello Yarn Fat Sock, um, and this was in one of her updates earlier this year, and it is um, it is a uh, sport weight sock, um, and the colorway is called Sudden Puddles, and I got two skeins. Um, I need to wind this one up because I've actually finished the first skein. And I um, am done with the um, bottom of the sweater and the kimono fronts. So this is how it's knitting up so far. I am super, super pleased with it. I ordered um, some little green buttons to go with for the two buttons on the front. And then there's actually one um, inside to keep the inside front. And that's a great representation of the color. It's got some browns and some greens and um, a little bit of that icy blue that she likes. And I think it is just a super sweet sweater. Um, I have the back and then I have sleeves and then I have a little bit of a, um, like border on the uh, sides of the kimono and then up around the neck. So like a collar, it's not really a button band because the buttons are already placed into the body of the sweater, but a little bit of an edging. So um, I hope to finish this one this week as well. The socks and this one will be my projects for this week. Um, and I would be super pleased if I get these done. Um, that would be sort of a great coup. And then I have... Um, one more baby sweater I'm hoping to do for this month. I am holding off because um, there is a Harry Potter Quidditch match <laughs> at the end of the month. It starts on June 20th um, and it is um, a speed test. Um, they want you to knit 200 yards in one week um, and I think that I could probably do a whole baby sweater in one week which would get me above 200 yards. Um, so my plan is to try and hold that last sweater off till the end of the month and do that and work on socks and baby sweater in between now 
um, and finish those. I also might have cast on another hat, um, which is on the couch, a charity hat. Um, and I have a couple companies sending me some yarn um, to test out. So I have a few other projects that I will be casting on between now and then. Um, I think the theme for June is instant gratification. Um, I did finish some sweaters and some longer term projects, um, but right now I am all about the uh, short 100 yard or 150 yard or one skein of sock yarn projects where I can just tear right through them and add them to my yardage total. Um, for stash dash and in general just move some stuff out of the stash and get a whole bunch of projects done. Um, I which brings me to two things. One is that with everything that I have finished this week, including some hand spun, which I will show you momentarily, I am now at 3,186 meters for stash dash, which is not bad considering we are just a little over two weeks into it. Um, I did see on Anne's podcast, Willy Wonka Fibers, um, she said that uh, Laura, Lala, uh, Lala, from um, the Knit Girls podcast, who are actually hosting the Stash Dash Along, said that in order to hit 15K for the summer, you would need to get through 1,300 meters per week, which is a lot. And I do not expect to be able to keep up this pace, um, but like I said, I've already crossed the 3,000 meter threshold. So next up is five, and my pseudo goal um, is 10, I think. Um, so I don't remember if there's a seven, it may be three, five, seven, ten, and 15. Um, so I am just going to keep going and I'm not going to declare an official goal, um, until I see where I'm going to end up. I might end up at 10,000, um, because I do have quite a bit of other things, uh, quite a bit of, um, quite a few more projects that I would like to do this summer, um, but I am pretty pleased with my progress so far. And I didn't even, um, quite a few people held a bunch of UFOs to finish off um, at the beginning of Stash Dash. And um, that is not cheating. It is certainly a way to play the game. Um, I did not have that many. Um, I had I had the sweaters, um, so I did do those, but um, in general, I did not have a bunch of stuff waiting in the wings because I just don't operate that way. So I'm pretty pleased with everything that I have been able to accomplish thus far. Um, what was the second thing? There were two things that I was going to tell you. The first one was Stash Dash. The second one was... I don't remember. Okay, if it comes back to me, I'll talk about it then. So let's move on to spinning. Last week I showed you a braid of a uh, Be Mice Elf. It was merino. It was a club colorway that I said that I had been hoarding for a long time. It was the Space Invaders colorway, um, which had teals and purples and a bright um, greeny yellow chartreuse color. Um, and I told you that I wanted to split them into two separate but equal um, bumps of fiber uh, and spin them through uh, very thin and then Navajo or chain ply to create um, matching sock yarn. And I applied last night and was super pleased with the result. Um, I don't think this will show the colors um, quite as beautifully as I want it to. I will take some photos and put it on Instagram. Um, I managed to um, divide very equally. Um, one of the skeins is 59 grams, the other is 61. So um, super, super, super close. Or is it 59 and 61? Yeah. 59 and 61 um and one skein had um they're like two yards off when I finished so that will make for very equal socks which I'm super excited about um this was the first skein and the second skein isn't quite as good but this was the first skein and I um I don't know how much you can tell but I was super pleased with how even it was I don't generally Navajo ply because I don't enjoy it and um, I did not expect, uh, in, therefore I am not super good at it, um, but I was so excited with how evenly this came out. Um, and I ended up with about 270 yards, which is um, for me quite good. Um, I know people who can get four or 500 yards of three ply. Um, for me, I generally end up in the 360, 350 range um, for two ply, which is about 700 yards of singles. And 270 times three is eight, 900 some odd yards of um, singles. 
So um, I spun super thin um, and totally met my goal on this. Um, so these are done and these will go into the pile to become socks. I hope to knit these in the next couple months, even though um, these are very thick wool, um, probably sport weight. So um, these will not be socks that I will wear anytime soon. We'll have to wait for the fall for those. Um, but I was super pleased with this. It was a great challenge project. I'm going to take some photos this afternoon and it is going into another Quidditch match for endurance, um, patience, strength, and uh, uh, pursuit of a goal. And so um, I am going to do that one, but I am super, super happy with the way those came out. So that brings me to what I will spin this week. I have a braid that I've been dying to spin for a while. Um, this is a braid of Shetland from Hello Yarn. It is the colorway Fife. And we'll just see if I can get it to, that's not bad, but it's um, also missing some. It's got some um, pinky purples, kind of magenta burgundy. It's got some green, some purple, some yellow, um, a little bit of like the like tan ochre, um, just some really, really beautiful colorways. Um, I am not a huge fan of Shetland. It tends to be um, a little bit rougher, although Adrian's Shetland is um, softer than quite a few of the Shetlands. Um, that I have worked with. And I think for this skein, which will go in the shop, so if it interests you, keep an eye out, I am going to try and create sock yarn. It will be two ply, um, but I think I'm going to try and create sock yarn um, like I was taught in the class that I took at ply, um, light and tight. So I will try to very lightly spin, spin the singles and then very tightly ply them, um, which should create um, a soft but durable sock yarn. So that is the plan for this braid. I'm still trying to get you the right colors um, and it's really not working. Ah, there we go. That looks a little bit more like what I am going to be spinning. So I will work on that to show you next week. And again, that will go in the shop. So I still can't remember the other thing that I was going to tell you, so I will have to put it um, online or in the episode thread or with the show notes or just blurt it out on Twitter if it comes to me. Um, so I guess that is it for today. That was quite a bit. Um, oh, I, I do know what it was. Um, I was talking about all the things that I was trying to finish for this month, and that is because... Um, Tour de Fleece is right around the corner. Tour de Fleece starts on July 3rd, which I know is still about three weeks away, but I am getting super excited because um, Tour de Fleece is one of my favorite times of year. Um, for most of that month, I do not spend a lot of time knitting. I spend all my time at my wheel. And um, so I'm getting very excited for that, but I think that's also why I am trying to knit all the things this month. Um, because next month I have one larger project for Camp Loopy I'm going to do a baby blanket for my new nephew. Um, but because I will be spending so much time spinning throughout the month, I am not clear on how much other knitting I will get to do. Um, I do have a few companies sending me some samples of things to try, so I will be working on those. Um, and uh, I might end up doing more like charity hats and things like that. Um, but I... Uh, I don't know how much knitting I will get done next month, so I was really trying to get a ton done this month, um, which is why I have so much to show you. So I think that is it for today. I hope that you have had a wonderful week. If this was your first time stopping by, I appreciate you stopping by and I hope you'll come back. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. I enjoy spending time with you. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Until I see you next time, I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye!